it does really bode well, you know, to see fans all over the world kind of gathering and basically bringing an end to this diabolical European Super League that they were trying to implement. And it's been great to see the backlash, really. It's been a little bit, you know, and what's I think called? It's been a little bit bittersweet for myself being a Manchester United fan, seeing some of our ex-pros who were, you know, um, disastrously silent throughout the entire Glazer occupation of the club and through you know Ed Woodward's malpractice of running the Man United team overall and our business and our transfer to see them now suddenly you know get the courage to speak up is a little bit bittersweet but it's good to see regardless but yeah what an amazing 48 hours um it's really definitely kind of restored my opinion not restored but it's definitely made me kind of question my idea that protest sometimes and outrage and mobilization online doesn't work it does have a lot of impact I think if we didn't have this collective anger and disgust towards the European Super League they definitely would have gone through I think the money that was already lined up the sponsorships and you know the earning potential would have just made it worth it for them to kind of you know be able to endure a lot of the hate and just kind of get over it which I'm kind of surprised I, I really did think they'd kind of hold out a little bit longer but I think the overall collective kind of like rejection of it and maybe more so with the players too because there's a lot of players behind the scenes that were really worried that it would affect their ability to play international football and all this kind of stuff and I think what we under I think what they might have underestimated these people that were trying to put this European Super League together, they may be underestimated what most football players are in it for. Right? If you don't play for some of the biggest clubs in the world, then you do get a lot of satisfaction just from playing the game, right? And competing against other players in other leagues and then testing yourself sometimes internationally if you get the privilege to represent your country. Um, it's not always about playing like the biggest and glitziest clubs in the world because, you know, not everybody has the ability of a Messi or Ronaldo to play for these kind of clubs. So you're going to have to just, you know, take what you're given at that stage in some, well, at some stage in your career, unless you have the, you know, the good fortune of ending up at a brilliant club somewhere. But not everyone has that benefit. So I think they may be underestimated um what football players are in it for and then of course they overly underestimated what football fans want to see week in week out because as much as you know you i think was it florentino perez or one of those people the other day he was had an interview where he said something like oh they kind of gave the idea that it felt like they were trying to do this european super league to cater to the younger audience that's what it basically felt like they were trying to compete um to get their eyes and attention and i think they regarded fans like myself as legacy fans basically fans are on the way out we weren't necessarily gonna buy more merch we weren't gonna you know purchase in-app stuff and whatever it may be called so and now maybe the the ability for them to squeeze more money out of us in our lifetime was basically diminishing as the years go by but with these kind of new digital native kids the only potential is kind of you know is limitless right and there's more of them right just you know simple maths or whatever it may be but i really question whether or not those fans are fans you can really build an entire league on like in the long term but again maybe covid really showed them that they could possibly do that because with covid and no one going to actual football stadiums you know in person it basically deemed it basically then kind of um what it kind of basically reduced all football fans to streaming fans right we all turned into the same person whether we were illegally streaming or legally streaming we're all the same people just watching it via our laptops or our smartphones or whatever it may be so maybe those numbers just made too much sense to them but I just can't believe that they had the guts and the gumption to do it without any consultation with the fans none zero and then they were surprised at the reaction it's just like what and it was so selfish as well. It wasn't, it was so self-serving. It only was going to be beneficial to the owners of the clubs. Let's not get it confused. This wouldn't have, even if you were a team in England that were, you know, selected to be part of this group, don't be confused. That money wouldn't have gone to transfer fees. That money wouldn't have gone to allowing your club to, you know, um, refurb your stadium. It wouldn't have gone to maybe, you know, um, kind of, redoing your youth team setup that wouldn't have gone to that that money would have gone directly in the pockets of your owners especially the glazers who currently are the you know custodians of manchester united they wouldn't have done anything to reinvest into the squad and to make it better they wouldn't have gone and got the world's best coaches and the world's best players in order to compete in the world's best league they wouldn't have done that they would have just you know skirted by doing the bare minimum because again there's no need to for to aim for excellence when there's no relegation and, you know, you get guaranteed money, you're basically rewarding mediocrity and you're basically, you know, allowing these clubs to, um, uh, what do you call it? Allowing these clubs to take advantage of a legacy that they've not helped to maintain in any way, shape or form in the modern era. Absolute 
heinous, heinous in all ways, in all ways. And don't get me wrong, maybe there is an element of this is going to be inevitable. There's going to be uh, a time in in the future where these clubs will eventually get the you know their ducks in order, hire a proper PR team, and consult fans and do something that's similar to a big six or to sorry to a, a super league, um, in some way, shape, or form. Because you know they definitely feel like they don't have the they don't have enough money. They want more. They definitely feel like they could kind of maybe generate more money on their own platforms, TV rights, all that sort of stuff. Cool, but there's a way to do it. There definitely is a way to do it that's not going to negatively affect the leagues all over the world because as it would have this would have had a knock-on effect in every single league in the world it would have just made it terrible and it's interesting too how much how little kind of regard european fans have for like the american league structure right and how they kind of structure teams and franchises and not having relegations we just don't get it whatsoever and they don't get it i think someone one of those sky news guys said something like he had a quote from one of the board members of one of the top six clubs who just couldn't get it around his head he couldn't get his head around the idea of relegation it just didn't make sense to him why do teams get relegated why do you get punished for not doing well in a league and then get rewarded for doing well in the, in the league below like it didn't make any sense to him like the teams are the teams isn't it they were the legacy teams they're the legacy teams there's no changing um it just didn't make sense and in the uk we just can't get around the idea of playing in the league or supporting a club in a league where no one gets relegated well what are the stakes so if, if, essentially if you are what if you are watching or following a team in an in in nfl you follow them for what reason so that they can win their region so that they can win the super bowl which is what you know through how many teams are going to be in there it's just it's a nonsense um sporting spectacle to kind of take maybe which makes sense why a lot of them are so much into stats and stuff because you know if you've got no trophies to win in the season you might as well just get obsessive about stats and you know um players and scouting younger teams and watching college football and so that's why probably they're obsessed with all that kind of stuff because it's just it may, that probably makes the sport a little bit more fun but if you don't have the ability you know the drama of maybe beating a top six club and maybe taking them off their perch and not allowing them to win the league and then that allows you to then survive if that drama doesn't exist then the only way to supplement it is to follow you know college level competition and you know over analyze statistics on players and stuff and follow them throughout the entire career and stuff that's the only way that makes sense crazy isn't it? absolutely crazy but this is the article confirming it um let's see if i can get it up on here let me get rid of this first so this is from Sky Sports. It says the following. Um, let's get it up on here. Move it a bit. Bear with me. Mm, there we go. So this is from Sky Sports. It says the following. Uh, victory for fans as all six English teams pull out of European Super League. Um, all English teams have now pulled out the European Super League. And I got a picture here of the Chelsea fans protesting outside the stadium as they were facing Brighton, I think. one Was it 1-1 one, one or 0-0? Nil, nil? I'm not too sure. But they basically blocked off the road and prevented the team bus from getting to the um, to the stadium, which was great to see. Peter Cech had to come out and kind of, you know, talk them down a bit. But that was cool. Um, Manchester United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Arsenal and Tottenham have confirmed that they will not follow through. They'll not follow Chelsea and Manchester. They'll follow Chelsea and Manchester City. Sorry, it withdrawing from the planned tournament. United said we will not be participating in European Super League. Just imagine the gumption that Arsenal and Tottenham had to be part of the European Super League. They would have just been getting spanked every single season, right? Every single season, and just be pocketing money that they wouldn't have spent on the players. Like just heinous these these owners and absolutely heinous. It continues. Chelsea faced um with an angry protest from their fans was first in saying it, it was preparing the documents to formally withdraw. Um with the club owner Roman Abramovich understood to have driven the decision, having listened to the fan protest and opted to back out. Crazy. Tottenham chairman Damian Levy said he regretted the anxiety and upset calls and confirmed the club had formally comment um some commenced procedure to withdraw from the group developing proposal for the European Super league the daniel levy one is very interesting right if you believe the rumors supposedly he got rid of jose Mourinho, which is crazy to think right jose Mourinho got sacked from tottenham and no one's even talking about it there's the european super league just completely dominated the headlines i'm sure Mourinho is probably not feeling too happy about that himself right that he's not in the papers and getting a chance to kind of you know throw his little darts back at tottenham or whatever because he's definitely going to end up doing that but if you believe the rumors allegedly Daniel Levy got rid of Judge Marina this weird timing now because you know they're about to play a cup final I think on the weekend the Caribou Cup final the first chance to win a trophy in you know many many years but Judge Marina got fired because allegedly 
Daniel Levy was banking on that money coming through from the ESL to help pay for Mourinho's severance package because of supposedly he's getting up to 30 million because he's obviously getting sacked before his contract ends. Um, and now that the league is gone, he's probably going to have to shell out money from the club's resources or his own pocket, so it's crazy. But then on the other end, there's a voice note going around allegedly of Jamie Redknapp from WhatsApp where he allegedly says the reason why Mourinho was sacked now was because they were outside the top six and he had some sort of clause in his contract basically meant if if they're not in the top six by a certain date within a certain window range date range um that he can half the severance package or so it, whatever if it was so if it was 30 million he only, he only has to pay him only 15 million so that might have been the reason why he decided to kind of you know um go for it now before things got too bad or before he actually got top four but they were still playing shit football so that or even going in range and he would have still had to pay him 30 million regardless of what it was the irony is not lost on me that Mourinho accused Wenger of being a oh, what's that thing called a uh, what do you call him he called Wenger a specialist in failure but it looks like Mourinho is a specialist in failure right he's been able to secure what was it over 90 million 90 over 90 million pounds in severance packages so far from the clubs he's been fired from insane it continues um liverpool said liverpool football club can confirm that our involvement in the proposed plans to form the european super league has been discontinued in recent days the club has received representation from various key stakeholders both internally and externally and we would like to thank oh uh, god let's get those things off my thing oh it's annoying isn't it and we would like to thank um uh, da, da, da. in recent days Cup has received reputation from various stakeholders in both telling and we'd like to thank them for their value contribution it's, it's annoying when you get called things like stakeholders and shit and it just uh, whatever meanwhile Arsenal admitted that making a mistake and apologised after confirming their withdrawal so Arsenal but I think the only one to actually apologise I think maybe Liverpool as well um, formally to their fans right um, you didn't get that from the Glazers which is understandable because they're pieces of shit it continues an open letter from the club board said last few days have been shown yet again the depth of feeling from our supporters around the world having um, have for the great club and the game we love we need to rem we need no reminding of this but the response from the supporters in recent days has given us time to further reflection and deep thought Man City said in a statement they had enacted the procedures to withdraw from the group developing plans for a European Super League City player Remy Sterling reacted to the news by tweeting okay bye manager Pep Guardiola previously criticised the plans for the close shop league as fans from other clubs gathered outside stadiums up and down the country UEFA yeah, President Alexander Serafin said that he was delighted to welcome City back to the European um, football family they have shown great intelligence and in listening to the many voices, most notably their fans, and they have spelled out the vital benefits that our current system have for the whole European football, from the war beating Champions League final right down to a young player's first coaching session at the grassroots club, he wrote. And the FA said the English clubs has proud um, has a proud history. English football sorry, has a proud history based on the opportunity for all clubs and the game has been unanimous in its disapproval for the closed leagues. It's a proposition that by design could have divided our game, but instead it has unified us all for sure so definitely a good thing overall isn't it definitely a good thing that this thing has been stopped in its tracks and now we can kind of get back to regular scheduled programming 